In the lesson on climate change, we saw how the release of extra greenhouse gases into the atmosphere causes the planet to warm. In this video, we will look more closely at the effects caused by the supply of thermal energy the Earth gets from the Sun. Here is a simplified graph of the average global temperature. You can see that over the last 2,000 years, temperatures have varied, but today, average temperatures are already one degree warmer on average than they were a hundred years ago. Pause the video and think of some problems that this global warming might cause. You may have thought of changing climate, extremes of weather, problems for ecosystems, rising sea levels, or ocean acidification. Let's look at these one by one. Climate change. Although the greenhouse gases are causing average global temperatures to rise, there will be places, such as the northern polar regions, where the rise will be much more drastic than in other places. Some models suggest, for example, that the Gulf Stream, which keeps Western Europe relatively warm in winter, may not reach so far north. As a result of this, Northern Europe may actually get cooler as the planet warms. Patterns of rainfall will also change. Although a hotter world would have more water evaporated from the seas, this water may not rain down as it does at present. Some places will undoubtedly have more rain, causing flooding, whereas others may have less rain, causing droughts. Another consequence of temperature change is that natural ecosystems will need to adapt. We are already seeing this with European crops. Sunflowers and colza, that's rape, are replacing oats and barley. Humans can cope with this, but natural ecosystems can be badly affected. If trees come to leaf early, as the climate warms, and the caterpillars hatch early, the local birds may miss this feast. When their eggs hatch, the grubs are gone, and there's little left for the baby birds to feed on. With more energy in the atmosphere, we will see extremes of weather. We are already seeing more violent storms causing floods and landslides, also aided by the loss of forests on mountainsides as crops replace forest or the wood is used as a fuel. Sea levels are rising, partly due to the warming of the oceans, water expands with heat like in a thermometer, and partly due to melting ice. If ice in mountain glaciers melts, that clearly will add extra water to the oceans and contribute to sea level rising. But here's a problem to think about. Do you think if the ice melts at the North and the South Poles, this will also cause a rise in sea level? Remember that the Arctic ice is floating, but Antarctic ice covers the landmass called Antarctica. Pause the video and think. Well. Antarctic ice, like mountain glaciers, is above ground, and if it melts, it will add water to the oceans. But the ice floating in the North Pole will simply contract into the space it displaced, and the sea level will not change. You can try this by floating an ice cube in a completely full glass of water. Does the water overflow as the ice melts? Try it. As sea levels rise, so more and more of our coastal cities will be threatened by flooding, especially at high tides and in stormy weather and in low-lying countries like Bangladesh, the Netherlands and in some Pacific island nations. Another problem comes from the extra carbon dioxide that dissolves in the sea. A good thing, you may think, because this removes some of it from the atmosphere. But the problem is that this makes the seas more acidic. Remember that carbon dioxide reacts with water to form a very weak acid, carbonic acid. It ionizes to form hydrogen and hydrogen carbonate ions. The warmer temperatures, coupled with the greater acidity, are causing coral to die, threatening the world's beautiful coral reefs. One final problem is what is called positive feedback, which actually is a bad thing. For example, Arctic ice reflects sunlight back into space, keeping the planet cool. As the ice melts, the reflecting white ice is replaced by dark water which absorbs sunlight. This heat makes more ice melt, which in turn allows more heat to be absorbed in a positive feedback loop. Another problem is that as the frozen northern marshy regions melt, methane, which is also a greenhouse gas, previously locked in the ice, is released, adding to the gases in the atmosphere, thereby causing more warming. And so the cycle goes on. So to summarize, global warming is already happening and is beginning to cause changes to our climate. More storms, floods, droughts, rising sea levels, and oceans becoming more acidic. Ecosystems under pressure. See our linked video to find out the evidence for all this.